Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, and welcome to this third session of the webinar of the Master in Cooperation and Development. Let's wait just a couple of seconds in order for everyone to join us, and then we will start. Okay. I guess we are all in. So, okay, I see Lorena. Lorena is connecting. Okay, so welcome, welcome all. I'm just I'm meeting some other friends. So let's start with the with the presentations. My name is Maria Benotti, and I'm the coordinator of the master uh, of the secretariat of the master in cooperation and development. We are running this uh, uh, third uh, um, webinar, and we are now running the selection process uh, uh, for the participation in the forthcoming edition of our master. And I would like to remember you that the deadline to apply to our master is the June 30, so it, it is fastly approaching. Um, we have organized this third meeting to learn more about the, our program. Um, in this session, the, the idea, is to focus our attention to the technical preparation uh, provided by our master program. And in particular, we will focus our attention to the project cycle management module. And we will do uh, that thanks to our, to our third, okay, sorry, I'm meeting Virginia also, <laughs> to our three guests. Today, we have the pleasure to have with us Marco Missaglia, uh, of course, you already know him. He is the Master Coordinator and Professor of Development Economics at the University of Pavia. Welcome, Marco Missaglia. We have with us uh, Ivan Toscano. Ivan is a, a Master's Lecturer and EU Project Desk Officer at VIS. Thanks for being with us and uh, welcome, Ivan. And also, we have with us uh, our former student, Manuel Morini, who is now working with the Ethiopian Humanitarian Fund at OCHA as a program officer in Ethiopia. So welcome, welcome back at the master, I would say. I would suggest that if you feel like you can turn on your camera so it is uh, easier for us to interact with you, if you don't mind. So it is always better to, to see each other. I'm also seeing Andrea who is connecting. Okay. Okay, the duration of this webinar is 45 minutes. And uh, of course, we will have a room at the end of the meeting for a session of questions and answers with you. So feel free to ask whatever you want uh, to our guests um, at the end of, uh, of the meeting, okay? Okay, so I will start by giving the floor to um, Marco Missaglia for a general introduction of our master program. Thanks, Marco. Thank you very much, Maria. Welcome to everybody. Well, uh, as uh, coordinator of this master program, my job today is to give you a, an overall picture of the structure, I would say, of this uh, master program. And then... Uh, our uh, former student, Manuel, uh, and our lecturer, uh, uh, even uh, will enter into the details concerning the project cycle management uh, part of this uh, master program. Well, uh, first of all, uh, it's important to know that the master is subdivided uh, into five main parts. There is from November to end of December, so a bit less than a couple of months, there is the so-called preliminary part. And the idea is to, um, let's say, build a common ground uh, among people with a very different background. So it's important, for instance, that everybody knows something on the essential notions of economics needed to understand development. It's uh, fundamental that everybody knows something about uh, the geography of the world, which is, of course, uh, so fundamental in the development sphere. And that's the purpose of the preliminary part from November to end of December, to Christmas time, essentially. Then uh, in uh, January, 
until mid-February, more or less, we concentrate on development economics. Well, we are, let me say something on this part. We are fully aware that uh, the uh, purpose of most students uh, attending this master program is not to become economists. However, being familiar, let's say, with uh, some of the uh, uh, main theories uh, concerning development and underdevelopment, uh, the relation between the north and the south of the world, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is clearly important uh, to become, uh, uh, I would say, better workers in the field of, uh, of uh, uh, development and, and cooperation. And uh, well, these two first modules, so the preliminary module and the module on development economics are the two, I would say, academic modules. Don't forget this is a master program. So there is a title which is offered and, and provided by a university. And uh, it is inevitable and I would say important to provide people with this uh, academic framework to think about uh, uh, development in a sense, uh, let me say that uh, the, the general purpose of this two first module is to be able to answer the question, why? Why is it uh, that uh, some countries are more advanced than others? Why is it that within each country there are some regions or social classes or sectors of the population which are richer than others and so on and so forth let's say that the 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 general purpose in these two modules is not to give solutions is not to provide receipts the general purpose is to understand the reasons that lies in the back of the main inequalities around the world let's say and then the third module which is in several respect most probably the most important module of the master is the PCM module, Project Cycle Management. Here we enter, let's say, into the most uh, uh, operational part of the master program, where the key, uh, the key question is not anymore why, but in some sense, how and what. Okay, what can I do? How can I intervene in, 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 the, in the development and, and cooperation uh, uh, sphere? And this is really, uh, pr this is probably the, the, the part uh, of the master program uh, which constitute, uh, constitutes uh, the, the main interest of the student attending the program itself, okay? And uh, there is always uh, uh, a, a good deal of expectations with respect to this uh, part of the uh, master program. And uh, let me very briefly describe this PCM project cycle management uh, uh, part of the program. First of all, there is uh, a description of the policy framework. Okay, so you you'll uh, receive some classes uh, concerning the European policies uh, in the field of cooperation and development. Uh, you receive some classes concerning the Italian policies in the field of cooperation and development. So the idea is a concrete project uh, doesn't operate uh, in a vacuum, okay? A concrete project operates in a political framework and being aware of the political framework is of course extremely important. Then, once this uh, 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 political frame of description is over, you really enter into the most operational phase, going from the project design and implementation until the project evaluation, okay? And uh, it is important to know that this, uh, the whole the, the PCM module is thought realized and taught by professionals like even for instance and like Manuel, okay, by people concretely working, having accumulated, accumulated a lot of experience in the cooperation field, okay. So 
uh, in a sense, this is, uh, I guess, the, the most original feature of the master uh, in cooperation and development of Padi. In this master, indeed, NGOs, uh, uh, operator, uh, uh, workers in the cooperation field on not only NGOs, operators, uh, are really, uh, um, are not just guests. They're not here with us just to teach a specific module, okay? They are really co-founder, first of all, the master was created 28 years ago, thanks to three Italian NGOs, VIS, CISP, and COPI, okay? So they participated very actively to the uh, um, um, foundation, uh, so to the, to the planning of the different activities in this master program. And uh, this PCM module is, in a sense, uh, let me use this expression, the realm of NGOs and uh, uh, cooperation uh, operators and workers. And this is really a very key feature of the Master of Padilla, uh, because uh, uh, it's a way of uh, 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 very practically uh, um, realizing a, a, a kind of a marriage between the academic world, why, and the NGOs and operators world, how and what. Okay, that's that's a very uh, successful, in my own idea, a very successful marriage between these two spheres. Once the, the, the PCM part, which is the, which is the longest, which is the longest of the master program, with the uh, with the highest number of hours, okay. Once this part is over, there is a final uh, uh, module dedicated uh, to uh, what we call the hot global issues, and uh, and this may change. Uh, this should change year after year because it really depends on the specific uh, situations around the world. Uh, I don't know. It it is very difficult uh, in in the last couple of years uh, not to discuss of Ukraine, uh, of Gaza, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hot issues, uh, by definition, may change from one period to the other. And in this uh, case, uh, the module is organized through seminars. Seminars, once again, given by experts from the UN world from international NGOs, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, the, the very last module is a module that takes place outside Pavia because I'm talking of the internship, okay? The internship is compulsory and it's, in, it's an extremely important part of our story. The internship may last from three to six months and in several cases, it's really the, the first door, let's say, open to the, uh, to, the professional, uh, to the professional world. In so many cases, thanks to the internship, our former students uh, uh, got their job, okay? Uh, even if I want to be uh, clear and uh, transparent, it's not that the internship is your first job, okay? In some cases, this happened, in some cases. However, in most cases, the internship gave our students those personal contacts, uh, um, personal skills, etc. thanks to which it was then much easier to find a job, okay? And, uh, and uh, the... Um, degree of success in job placement is very high, okay? The bulk of our uh, former students found a job in the cooperation field, okay? And in several cases, and, and, uh, and this uh, uh, is to be recognized, they uh, achieved a, a great success and uh, uh, very important positions within their own organizations. So this is more or less the structure of the master program. And, uh, and uh, let me conclude uh, by emphasizing one more the 
um, the pivotal role played by the PCM module, Project Cycle Management module. Okay, in a sense, we are fully aware that most students are especially interested in this part of the program because uh, they don't want to become professors. They want to become operators in the field of cooperation and development. We are fully aware of this and, and then fully convinced that the input provided by NGOs, people and cooperation people outside the university is really fundamental. And I, I do insist on this uh, uh, successful uh, marriage. I think it's the plus offered by this uh, master program. Uh, in case uh, you have questions, uh, uh, we will have some time at the end of the webinar, but for the time being, I think my intervention is over. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Marco, for this uh, comprehensive introduction. Um, now, I would like to get a step into the project cycle management module um, with the Ivan, Ivan Toscano. <clears throat> Ivan is teaching uh, with the course on project formulation and writing, which is, I would say, the core part of the, the project cycle management module. And uh, so let's talk more in depth about that with Ivan. Um, so Ivan, I would, I would ask you, uh, what is the, this course about and why is it so important for our students? Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you, Marco, for inviting me. It's always, it's always a pleasure being here and, uh, and talk about it, this module. Because as uh, Marco was saying, we, are, we were among the founders of, of this master, but we do believe that this is, this is the real added value um, of a, of a wide and, and, and professional scientific offer, which is the master program. But inside this master program, let me, maybe I'm a bit from, uh, from, from my side, pushing my side, but let me uh, really stress the, the, the importance and the added value on, uh, on, on this 35 hours on project cycle management, particularly dealing with how we conceive and write a project proposal. Um, so it's my 13, I think, year uh, here in the master program, and it really is something that we developed uh, side by side with the students themselves at a pivotal level, as Marco was saying, just to come over the the needs of answering to, to the practical need of giving some practical tools, uh, not only to write a proposal, but just to to build up a professional profile. So let me let me get a bit into the details of this. So into the project cycle management, we will particularly deal with me on how to conceive and write a quality-based proposal to be submitted within the most um, recognized and, and important international donor and funds. Uh, so we will move from the techniques and the tools uh, to identify a project proposal coming from the lecture of a background uh, so the lecture of the needs and problems dealing with the sector, dealing with the country, and dealing with a particular target group. Then, by reading and by understanding the relevance of the background we are analyzing, we will try to conceive a consistent and, and impactful uh, project strategy, which according to the theory of change, would produce an impact in the short, medium, and long term over the situation in the picture we identified. And this will be the most challenging, but also, let me say, the most interesting part of our work. So let's conceive this, this part of the work as a, you know, as a scaffolder, you know, that you will be uh, step by step, piece by piece constructing uh, to build up your own professional pattern, because we will be giving you some, some hints and some tools moving, as Marco was saying, from our personal experiences. So we will not just, you know, professional and teachers uh, will come there to just tell you a story, but we'll be practitioners. It will be more interesting to know your points of view on how you would put in practice a particular tool from your experience and from your, uh, let's say, perception of the reality, because this will be also for us the most uh, um, um, uh, impactful and, and, and interesting things. So moving from the theory to uh, understand how a project will really come to, come to the reality, how from something that we study from a desk which is the analysis of the situation, 
by really working in a real group environment, we will come out to um, uh, a solution and a strategy which would be really likely to produce an impact on the situation that we analyzed. That's why if you understand what I mean, uh, you can easily understand why probably this will be, this is conceived, this is understood as the main core partners, co core part of the, of the master program. And also uh, look into the feedback that we received, also probably the most interesting part, according to the student's point of view, because they feel like some, some practical uh, a part that will give concrete tools uh, to build up their professional pathways. Um, and this is also why it, it is really long lasting part of the master program, something like 34 hours, uh, because we conceived them and we developed and further improved it year by year. Uh, so that we moved from 12 hours, it was six or seven years ago. Now it's 34 because we added new components. And most of all, we conceived a structure of the, of the module, which is a 25% theory. So we moved from a theoretical framework, 25% of best practice sharing. So we will be presenting you um, concrete project experiences according to the practitioner's point of view. So shifting from theory to, again, field, field work. And the, the rest of the models, 50%, will be project work. In this project work, it would be not just assignment. This is maybe the most uh, pilotal part that we developed together with, uh, with Marco and, and Maria throughout the years. It is not just assignments that we will be giving and will be correcting together. So we will be dividing in working groups and I will be working with you as a peer. So shifting from you know professor to facilitator to peer working with you because this is what I do in my working environment. So we will be simulating also, you know, fight, fighting and comparing on, 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 on different visions of the same problems to understand how through this comparison, we will come out to a shared solution, which will be really like, uh, likely and, 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 and uh, uh, most probably to have a, an impact on the situation that we analyze together. And this is also for me the most stimulating part because I will be um, working with you uh, throughout the lesson, 50% uh, of the time of the lesson will be like this, and we will be seeing how shifting from theory to practice it will be even more interesting to understand the real importance of a tool which at the first sight may, may appear a bit, a bit you know, theoretical. We will see how it really, it, it, it's, uh, it's part of the uh, scaffolders, as I would say, of tools, the skills, abilities, and competencies that in this sense will be not only used to write a project. If you understand that we move from analysis of a situation and come out to a strategy, you may understand how in your pro professional profile, whatever will be your career inside an NGO, inside a European um, Commission, or inside other international organization like Manuale in OSHA, you will, you will really see how this will be the core professional scaffolder that you will use throughout your career. So I would say that it's not only just to write a concept note and having most uh, um, um, opportunities to, to gain funds, which is important as well, but it's also to understand how to shift from reading and understanding a situation to find out a consistent plans of solutions, which really would have an impact, not in one year, not in two years, but maybe in the middle term, we will be um, we will be impactful in that way. Uh, so this is, I, I think, how uh, we, we, we think and, and developed uh, the, the module. So most of the, of the, we will merge together, you know, scientific and, 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 and academic theoretical background through um, uh, really professionalization uh, and, and, and uh, employable oriented it works. So we will also talk on how to structure our professional profiles. Me, myself, I have the luck to work for an NGO, but also to do this work at a consultancy level. So it's also nice to understand which are the, you know, the, the, the opportunities and, and that this typology of skills and abilities will open up to you. Or why are they looking for this kind of professionals in, in, your, in your career? So, and, and this is also why not only we um, put a lot of efforts and enthusiasm being not a professional or academic on this field, but practitioner, showing our points of view and our experience with you. There is not only because we, uh, as Marco was saying, we made up and we uh, created this master program 28 years ago, but it's also because 
half of our staff working with ourselves in the countries or in our HQ comes from this master. So sometimes it's 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 we we do care to build up your professional profile, but we also put a lot of efforts, an extra hour working with you because we know that you will be um, our colleagues in a couple of years. So it's we, we are betting together on a shared, uh, you know, uh, on a shared professional development. And, and that's why also some of us, me personally, are also available to work further outside of the, 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 the master program in parallel to the other to the other to the other lessons, continue working and exercising with you. Of course it's 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 not mandatory. So those of you who'd like to continue working together. Why we do that? Because we like our job for sure, but because we are betting together that you will be the professional of tomorrow we will be working with. And uh, Manuel, that you will be hearing in, in a while, it's a practical example of this. He, he was a former master, for, former students of, of, the, of the master. He was my previous colleague in BIS uh, up to three years ago. Now he's, developed, he's working in the UN and is uh, our, stake, our, our stakeholder and partner in many projects. So um, that's for real. It's not just to say that you will be uh, the one we will be working with in a couple of years. We we do believe in this. We know that it will happen and we will be more than happy to, to start working with you in the master program, sharing our experience. Thank you so very much. And I do look forward to seeing you and to working with you next year. Thanks a lot, Ivan, for your in-depth analysis of, uh, of the abilities. I would say that our students will learn uh, thanks to the project cycle management module uh, within the master program. Now I'm really happy to, to give the floor to, to Manuel, to his fresh experience. Um, so Manuel, thanks for, uh, for accepting to be with us. Manuel has a solid working experiences in the humanitarian field in Eastern Africa, mostly in international CSOs and the UN agencies. Now, um, currently, Manuel is onboarding with the Ethiopian Humanitarian Fund as a program officer. So thanks. And uh, yeah, I would like to, to invite you to, to tell, tell us something uh, on your experience and what are you doing there? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Marco, for inviting me and Maria for organizing. Um, so I'm going to try to be really practical because probably you need to listen experience rather than other stuff. So as Ivan said, um, I basically started the master after one year working experience. Before that, no experience, just university. Actually, it's called Italian Civil Service which is an opportunity that most of the country has in different terms, but at the end is a very junior first time opportunity sponsored by the Italian government. Nothing so incredible. But that's what was my push to apply for the master. Because at the beginning, uh, I actually travel because I was looking for traveling. I will be very honest in this. The first time ever in Ethiopia, I was looking for something different. Then after that, I said, okay, you're not that bad at this. You should try to get more technical. And so that's why I apply for, to the master. Uh, of course, being an Italian, we have a big network. So, you know, I was already in Ethiopia. People that were telling me, oh, look, that master is so good. And I say, why not? Let's try. And um, and trying to, to, to build on what Ivan and Marco said, the master is really, really good, honestly speaking. Um, you are going to learn a lot of technical stuff, which is needed in our working environment. Either we like or not, is a working technical environment where year by year you are growing up. You can always, you know, using other different skill to convince someone to invest in your project or, you know, to collaborate with someone else. But technically speaking, and academically speaking, is crucial. And uh, I want to stress the academical part a bit because sometimes, okay, I've been always saying to people, go and learn the academical stuff because what we are learning academically is what is reflecting the reality. Today we are studying A, tomorrow we are going to study B and even the theory behind will change. Probably some old theory will pop up again, some other that will be, let's say, not real, real you know, not super actual, but it's important. It's something that 
is giving you much more credibility toward the other people if you know what you are talking about. The technical component, I've been always saying that it's a learning by doing because you really need to spend time in learning. It's, it's a never stop ending process, process, but having colleagues like Ivan or other people from NGO who had experience, is, it's important. I've been, I'm, I met many, many colleagues all over the year and uh, you can feel the difference when people have a good and strong academic background. Of course, with the time, we can learn is not like rocket science, uh, unless otherwise we are engineer or medical, but probably is not really the case here. But the more you are dealing with, you know, important stuff, the more you need to be convincing, especially in, a, in an environment where colleagues, uh, the, the money are getting down. And uh, in general, we need to, to be able to, to do better than before. We need to be more efficient and it's not a donor requirement, but it's, uh, it's how the things are working right now. So um, as I said, after the master, I did this internship with the VIS. I think, I'm not sure, I think it lasts three months. After that, I got a contract, which is what I was looking for. Um, and uh, I want to be super, super honest. I was not the, you know, the best person fit in that position that time. But uh, as Ivan said, uh, their organization co-founded, which are investing in the master. So knowing that you could, you know, work together with Ivan, even the time after, if some things are not really clear, you can always ask. There are people who are always available. It's an added value. And um, I worked with VIS two years after that in Ethiopia. Um, and then in Rome, actually, it was super interesting, even moving from uh, the field to the HQ. At that time, uh, uh, actually, it was a bit weird because I worked on the USA project for COVID-19 uh, recovery in Italy. So it was actually super interesting to do something completely different from what I'm doing right now. As uh, Maria said, now I'm working with OCHA, since, uh, which is the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs here in Ethiopia since uh, January 2022. And um, I got the JPO. I don't know if uh, you are familiar with that. It's a program sponsored by the Italian government. There are other countries which are sponsoring the different citizenship. And the good thing, um, for some countries, Italy is sponsoring too. Uh, for some countries from a third country, which is a good, good opportunity, honestly. And now uh, I will say that I reached the maximum achievement of my life because I got a proper job in the sense that if with a GPO, uh, you are competing with us a limited amount of people because maybe only Italian in my case, under 30, blah, blah, blah. Now I got a job uh, which was totally free for competition. So it's a great achievement. It's a, it's a personal achievement and satisfaction. And honestly, I'm thankful for the master. There are some technical elements that uh, I learned there. Um, I, I was speaking to Maria about my experience and that I think especially for those who know what they would like to do in this kind of environment, if they, you really need something, it's a big added value. Uh, and not only technically, I want to stress one point that maybe it's more it's tailor on my on my way of working, but having the chance of being probably with three Italian, four Italian, in a bunch of uh, thirty five students coming from everywhere was the greatest added value. I didn't have experience in the past. That's why I'm saying it was my biggest added value. Uh, nowadays, uh, uh, communication skill, uh, team building skill, all this kind of thing you are learning practicing with people. There's no other way, no other way. You cannot learn on a, on a paper and uh, and that's a good time. I mean, uh, as Ivan said, spending time together, trying to define a project, trying to define a strategy, trying to see how other people are thinking. Because for me, the, the biggest challenge at the beginning was to understand the way of thinking of other people. Because even on the academic component, then is, re is reflecting the reality. And I remember I had this good memory of a long discussion on demography. Uh, for us, we are thinking demography in a certain term, 
other people are thinking the demography in another term, why we should push here and there, it's super interesting because then at the end we are serving someone who are usually different from us. We need to be, we need really to wear the, the other shoes. That's a good starting point, I think. And, um, and then again, I, I really want to stress the, the moment of spending time together. Um, people from uh, Africa, from Europe, from uh, a good memory of people from Afghanistan. You, you are going to learn from someone that pro for which probably you are going to work with in the future. You might, you know, live there and just thinking to, to Afghanistan. But uh, unfortunately, we, we had a good, strong relationship with, uh, with Palestine and with the university and things to see how things are working now. Uh, you know, I just... Um, there was the advertisement of this uh, webinar online and one colleague in Ethiopia, they called me, you did the GPO too, I didn't know. She was Ethiopian, I didn't even know. She was, she's working with WHO right now. And it's interesting to see how the network is not something that people are just saying. It's really about knowing people, knowing their, you know, what they would like to do, what they're doing. Uh, how can I get something to someone in exchange of something different? Because at the end, we are working together. It's, um, it's a network. It's, uh, it's important to, to be all together. And uh, I think, I mean, the reality now is just confirming this. And um, yeah, that, that, that's it. I mean, uh, I, I think if you, if you colleagues, you have any question, uh, I'm more than happy to answer. But I think uh, what I was trying to stress is that you can you you can really be ambitious. I mean, you you can try to be there because the the, the quality is really really high. And uh, and I learn other students, I learn other master. It's not, and this one is good. It's honestly good. Yeah, that's it. Open for a question, if any. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Manuel, and really the best of luck for your future job and congratulations on this uh, great achievement that you had. Okay, guys, so now the, the floor is yours, uh, really. So uh, just feel free to, to ask uh, questions, curiosities, information to, to Marco, Ivan, or, uh, or Manuel, or even me, <laughs> but uh, for, for technical stuff uh, uh, regarding the application. So... We have uh, more or less five minutes um, more, so just don't waste time and don't be shy. Wrap up some ideas. Okay, Dorothy. I see your hand on, so please um, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, thank you uh, for the presentations, and uh, it's been nice uh, to learn uh, or get a, a glimpse of uh, what the course offers. Uh, my name is Dorothy. Uh, I'm from Kenya uh, with a background in natural science. Uh, I've been uh, able to work and uh, do a bit of uh, pro run a number of projects, not necessarily in actual, but uh, in um, agriculture and uh, tourism areas. So um, I've gone through the course. I've seen uh, that there are um, three uh, scholarships. So my question is uh, uh, directed to you, and I would uh, like to ask if uh, you could elaborate on the application process and the specific criteria for each of the three scholarships. Uh, that is the one financed by the master course, uh, PISP, and uh, the one that is uh, 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 financed by the college, the university. So what are the specific criteria uh, that will guide us when we do the application? Thank you. Okay, thanks, Dorothy. If I got it right, uh, you would like to know more about the criteria for the selection in uh, um, um, for the eligibility criteria of the scholarships. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I I would address it to to Marco Missaglia. 
which kind of scholarships and which are the eligibility criteria to, to gain the scholarships. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Dorothy, for your question, which is, of course, uh, important. Well, uh, we have different kinds of uh, uh, scholarships. There is the so-called full scholarship, then there is the so-called partial scholarship. And, uh, and uh, full scholarships, in turn, uh, may belong to two different typologies. Let me give you concrete examples, okay? Because that's the best way of understanding. The luckiest persons are those able to gain a full support, meaning that you don't have to pay fees and you don't have to pay anything to remain in Collegio Borromeo. Collegio Borromeo is the physical place in which uh, uh, lectures take place uh, and where people may stay, students may stay, sleep, eat, live. Okay, so a full, full scholarship means that you don't have to pay neither fees nor, let's say, accommodation uh, uh, expenditures. And uh, <clears throat> then we have a, a reduced form of full scholarship, meaning that you don't do, you don't have to pay fees, okay, but you have to pay for accommodation. Third possibility, a partial scholarship usually means that you have to pay fifty percent of the uh, uh, total amount for fees, and you have to pay for accommodation. Okay. These are the three possibilities. Well, uh, uh, what are the criteria? And uh, let me add, uh, what about the overall availability of, uh, of, of the scholarship? The overall availability is really, uh, uh, as economists would say, an endogenous variable, meaning that it strongly depends on the number of applicants who are able to pay the full price. The higher the number of people able to pay the full price, the higher the number of scholarships. Okay, so usually we cannot uh, decide ex ante, we cannot decide a priori the total available amount to fund scholarship. That's scholarships. That said, each year we have scholarships. And, and uh, uh, well, and the total availability on top of depending on the number of uh, uh, full uh, 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 students that pay the full price, let's say, it, that also depends on the external support that uh, we can receive from this, for instance, from the Italian government or from private donors, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the uh, criteria, uh, full scholarships uh, by regulation of the, uh, uh, of the University of Pavia are only offered to students from developing countries, okay? Meaning that we can offer some scholarships to Italian students uh, but, or European students, but in this case, it is a partial scholarship because full scholarship uh, may only be offered to students from uh, coming from developing countries, okay? That's a University of Pavia uh, uh, regulation. And then uh, the, criteria are, the criteria are, of course, uh, uh, your income, meaning that when you apply and you apply for a scholarship, okay, you should send uh, all the papers and documentation mm, uh, that may help us uh, to evaluate uh, your, let me use this terrible expression, your ability to pay, okay? We should be uh, helped in uh, assessing the possibility of people uh, uh, to pay something for the, uh, for the scholarships. And uh, the more generous uh, the papers and documentation you send us, uh, the easier will be for us uh, to judge and evaluate, to assess 
those uh, who can get these uh, uh, scholarships. Let me add one last point, uh, which is really a key point. And uh, uh, unfortunately, we are not allowed to make this point public through our website for reasons that I'm going to explain. Over the last three years, we were able to support everyone, every student, every single student for the internship, okay? Meaning that, imagine that you go to uh, Ethiopia, I'm, I'm, I'm giving the example of Ethiopia because Manuel is with us now. Imagine that you're going to Ethiopia for an internship uh, lasting six months, okay? You will receive an amount of money going from 700 to 900 euros per month, okay? We were able over the last three years to offer this kind of support to everyone. And this support was made possible by a European program, which is called the Erasmus Traineeship, okay? And each year we have to apply for this program. And that's why we are unable to, let me use this terrible word, to sell this opportunity ex ante. We cannot promise ex ante to people that we will have this kind of support. But as a matter of fact, we had this kind of support for everyone over the last three years. And I'm fully confident that, that we will have this support as well for students of this, for you, let's say, for those applying this year. And believe me, it's a serious support because there are so many master programs in which the internship is compulsory, but you have to fund your own internship without any support from the program itself. Thanks, Marco. <laughs> Okay, I also see uh, David's hand. So please, David, go ahead. David, are you there? Or otherwise, we will go for Paul. Um, thank you. Thank you for the for the great explanation, Marco. Um, my question is in regards to the to the question that was asked about the scholarship. Uh, mostly, I know you do receive a lot of uh, applications, but is, would it be okay in case uh, one is not as not qualified to be given the scholarship, maybe to be given a snapshot of why they did not qualify? Because I'm looking at it, I applied last time, I got a rejection, but you see now I'm left in the dark. I don't know why. I did not qualify to be a part of those who will get the scholarship. So maybe if those who have been rejected can receive a reason why, will that one be possible from your end? Thank you. I'm also from Kenya, by the way. So if I got the point, uh, you are asking, uh, uh, the reasons why one could be judged not to be eligible uh, for the scholarship. Am I right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Well, of course, it's not an, an absolute judgment. It's a relative judgment. Uh, meaning that it, it really depends on the number of people applying from the, uh, for the scholarships, okay, on their... Uh, country of origin on their personal uh, uh, economic uh, situation, et cetera, et cetera. So given the budget constraint we have to face, because of course we have to face uh, a budget constraint and uh, a key part of the project uh, uh, cycle management uh, will be to learn to deal with budget constraint, of course. And given the budget constraint we have to face, uh, uh, the number of scholarships available is limited. And if one 
is judged not to be eligible, it's simply because someone else was judged was, was judged to be more eligible. It's a relative judgment, not an absolute judgment. Okay, thank you, Marco. Uh, I hope, uh, uh, yeah, Paul, I hope it is okay for you <laughs> with this answer. But of course, uh, keep in mind that if you have any specific questions, you can always refer to the Secretariat of the Master Programme. Um, I will uh, write my email, of course, uh, on uh, on this chat. So, so you can always refer to the Secretariat for specific uh, details on the application process. So um, let's see if anyone else uh, has uh, questions or curiosities. Otherwise, we, we are going to, to close. And, and... Sorry, Maria, may I add one point? I, sure. Of course, I fully understand uh, the, the uh, worries about scholarships and funding. It's, uh, we, we are, uh, we, because we all have to deal with uh, budget constraints. Uh, at the same time, let me uh, emphasize that uh, till now, and we started uh, 28 years ago, till now, the master program, in a sense, uh, uh, managed to become, uh, uh, for, for single students, self-sustainable, in the sense that, thanks to what Ivan and Manuel explained, uh, uh, to us, okay, the degree of success in the sense of job placement is very high. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm simply telling you the truth. I don't have any interest in, in lying, okay? And meaning that this kind of uh, 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 expenditure is to be considered an investment. Rather, rather than a consumption expenditure. It's an investment expenditure because in most cases, the very large majority of cases, people manage to get a nice job, okay? And uh, which is at the end of the day, the purpose of uh, students attending this uh, master program. That said, we will always do our best uh, to be able to offer a large number of scholarships, okay? That's why, for instance, uh, we are now applying uh, to the Italian government, uh, and in case of success, in case of success, we will be able uh, uh, to offer a very significant number of scholarships. But don't forget the story of uh, making an investment rather than a pure consumption expense. Thanks a lot, Marco. So, guys, are you are you there? <laughs> if you don't have any questions, just give some space, some seconds again. Okay, Magdalene. Okay, Magdalene, go ahead, please. Are you there? I still see David. We have two more yeah, minutes still, left. Yeah, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm okay. Ciao, David. Hi. Yeah. Um. I I saw the the, the, the call for the uh, application for the masters, and I went through the the requirements, and of course I saw somewhere it said that um women like females from developing, developing countries are mostly uh, encouraged to apply. I don't know, I just want to understand, uh, is this a scholarship more focused on females only or males as well, they have a chance of uh, being given the scholarship? Well, uh, very rapidly, this is a policy which is applied by so many organizations and institutions around the world. And the concrete meaning is the following. Imagine that there are two persons, okay, with the very same features, with the very same characteristics, same income, same background, same accumulated wealth, 
same everything, okay? But one is a man and the other is a woman. The women will be selected, okay? That's a policy which is applied by so many institutions around the world. But don't forget this uh, chateris paribus condition, same income, same uh, uh, background, uh, same everything, okay? Which is the, the, the condition to apply this uh, preferential treatment to women. All right, thank you, Mark. My pleasure. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, so um, before leaving, okay, uh, I'd like to invite you to join us for our next webinar. And our next webinar will be on July 9th. Uh, we will have with us George Bail. Uh, he's a former master student as well. He's Palestinian and he's now working with the UNO Social Business Center at the Bethlehem University. So this, is, this will be another special occasion to, to get a step into our program and, uh, and to know uh, our former students. So thanks a lot, Ivan. Thanks a lot, Manuel and, uh, and Marco for your availability today. So the deadline to apply is June 30. I will be available for any any doubt, any curiosity, any any help that you may need. Okay, thanks once again, and um, let's see on July nine. Bye bye. Thank you thanks very a much. Lot. Thank you, Manuel. Thank you, Evan. Thank you. And bye bye. Thank you, so much. you all. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.